Okay, DragonCon attendees, thank you so much for joining us for DragonCon Goes Virtual. Um, this is our 2021 recommendations for what you should be reading in quarantine. Uh, we know that this has been a long, weird summer, and obviously you need something fantastical to entertain you. Our authors today will tell you about some of their books that they have coming out, some of their favorite books, and inspire you to put down the Netflix and pick up something way better. So we are joined with three absolutely fantastic authors. And I'm gonna ask my first author, Tamsin Silver, to introduce herself and go ahead and give her very first recommendation of the evening. Awesome. Hi, I'm Tamsin Silver and I'm an author with Falstaff Books. Um, I write both urban fantasy and historical fantasy, and I write for, um, there's a web series out of mine called Sky of the Damned, that's Sky with an E. Um, uh, if I were to give, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give my first one. I'm gonna tell you what I've been listening to. So it's a little different. Um, so uh, I don't know, ever, does anyone here know who J.D. Robb is? Yes. You know who that really is? Yes. Uh, J.D. Robb, for those of you who don't know, is Nora Roberts. J.D. Robb is the name she uses to write a series of crime books called the In Death Series. Um, I started reading these in 2011 when my first book came out because I fell and broke my hand. And so I spent the summer reading these on my Kindle. And um, someone I worked with just before quarantine was like, oh, I need something to read. And I mentioned these. And um, she was like, she told me later, she was, oh, the audiobook version is great. Uh, the woman who reads it is phenomenal. I was like, hmm, I don't have Audible, but I'm interested. This is the gateway to madness and money. <laughs> That's so true. Do you know how many books are, I can pull up the list. It's like 50 something books in in-depth. So um, it's not like I didn't know them, but I was like, well, I'm not about to start. I don't even know where I left off. So I start with one, and if you've bought the Kindle version of it, you get the audiobook cheaper. So Audible sees that because they are connected to Amazon in a creepy way. And, <laughs> um, and, and so I joined Audible and started devouring the books because they're only like $7.90 each. So I started listening, and then it was a two, maybe a week, two weeks later, we went on quarantine. I'm on book 50 something now. Yeah, <laughs> Lizzo, I can read the lips. So um, I'm justifying these purchases because um, I'm gonna be doing research into something and I'll, I'll go into that on when the next question comes around for me. But um, I have, I love them. And if you've never, if you've never, um, if you've never read them, um, if you've never listened either way, these are some amazing characters. Nora Roberts is the queen, and um, you miss them. Um, when I don't, you don't listen to the, you miss these characters. You miss Eve Dallas, you miss Peabody, you miss McNabb and his stupid prance and his earrings, and you miss Rourke. Like you just, you can't stop yourself. And, and it's really a great, it's really a great opportunity to learn about characters and and all that. So I highly recommend listening. The woman who does the read, she does different voices for everyone and they are very different. You can actually hear the difference. So that is my first quarantine uh, recommendation is in-depth JD Robb audiobook or Kindle or I wouldn't do print. You're gonna go through them like this. Just Kindle that shit. <laughs> I will totally say, um, I think my mom introduced me and my high school friends to J.D. Robb and convinced my best friend if she went to Ireland that she would find a man just like that. And as we found out when my friend came back from Ireland, that was not true at all. <laughs> but Damn, I had plans people. for after quarantine. <laughs> so she looked in every bar and every pub for an amazing person. <laughs> There, well, there you know, it's funny you should say that because I always thought to myself, how do I picture Rourke? And I kind of, and I saw a picture one day of, of a, an Australian actor who really has similar look that I think 
would do a great job playing playing him. But like I don't know, we'll see. I think I think they're missing an opportunity. You could turn this into a TV show or a movie series, and I think it would do fantastic. But yeah. oh yeah, and there's certainly enough content there. It's not like oh George R. R. Martin who you know. Oh, if there's enough content for forever. They could do they could do seasons upon seasons. And Eve Dallas is a great character. I would I would be glued every day. I couldn't stop myself. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, well, our next author joining us is Jean Marie Ward. If you would please go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know what you think we should be reading for the rest of the summer. Okay, uh, Jean Marie Ward, write fiction, nonfiction, and everything in between. Uh, most recent uh, thing is a foreword for a lovely anthology called Concrete Dreams, Witches, Warriors, and Wise Women, available from Perspective Press. And um, my, um, well, I've got set a whole list of things because it was really hard in March. Um, all the things that I normally go to as my comfort reads, there are two particular writers who always have something wonderful out and I could not handle them. One, and I'm not specifying them simply because I, this is going to be a spoiler. One of them, the, annual book had a cliffhanger and I'm sorry I couldn't handle any more cliffhangers I was living one and the other one I couldn't handle the stress to my uh, favorite characters so uh, I, I sort of flailed around fortunately I found uh, there was a Sherry Thomas Lady Sherlock mystery a wonderful series uh, about historical mysteries of Lady Charlotte Holmes, who had deliberately ruined herself so she wouldn't have to get married and now is living with the consequences and trying to pretend pe to people that she, she's the caretaker of this very elderly, very sick genius, and it's actually her. And uh, so that was there. And then there was, um, I sort of stumbled onto an author I had read in a different identity and had read her horror book the year before. Uh, Ursula Vernon, also known in her adult uh, fiction as T. Kingfisher. And so I read Paladin's Grace and it's about a perfumer and it's set in a kind of not quite medieval world. It's mainly early industrial because we're looking at clocks, we're looking at guns, we're looking at these things. And um, it, I just, the minute I stopped, finished that last page of Paladin's Grace, I went out and bought Sword Heart. And then from Sword Heart, I went to a, a minor mage. And just recently, and this is something you should be reading right now, is it'll make you feel so good. It's A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. Nice. And it's just fabulous. All of her stuff is absolutely fabulous. I can't recommend it enough. The other thing I would recommend, and I didn't think I would like this because I'm not a big epic fantasy person. I like cities. I like, you know, people in urban environments, even though I do like history. And it goes back to Sherlock again. Uh, Catherine Addison has just released something called Angel of Crows, which is a very queer reimagining of the whole Sherlock uh, canon in an alternate universe. And I am not going to give away the big reveals, but just let me just say that the writing is exquisite and the story will, even though you know how these are going to end because she's talking about all the classic Sherlock apps, you're going to keep reading. You're going to keep reading. Cool. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, I do love Sherlock, and I just don't think there's enough Sherlock out in the world, so this is great. But I'm not going to lie, you kind of had my heart skip a beat when you said defensive baking. That mm -hmm. sounds fantastic. Oh, go read that one. I know you bake, and so you absolutely must, positively must read about this wizard whose only <laughs> skill is being able to animate gingerbread boys. Oh, that's my dream. <laughs> My husband that's hilarious and i've never wanted to like create like, i really genuinely want a death by chocolate because um since 
since I will say I have not been as active this particular quarantine as I ought to have been. Um, my doctor mentioned, he's like, maybe you should go jogging. I was like, oh, it's, it's 85 in the shade at night. Yeah. You're like, I'm not jogging. <laughs> go to the gym. I don't no. jog. <laughs> no. I'm that sure. means, that means glowing. <laughs> Yeah, right? I would genuinely choose. If I could chase a gingerbread man around my house, I would do that all day long. I would be like a cat and just walk. You go find that book. You're going to love it. Trust me. Nice. <laughs> Funnily enough, Jean, I heard you say a lizard's guide to baking, and that in and of itself sounded really intriguing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> That's what I thought she said, too. A I was lizard's like right guide to defensive baking. No, I'm got sorry. That. I was like, lizard? Even better. I heard the W. Don't worry. I was like, I heard the W, too, but that's hilarious. <laughs> I heard an L. I'm fired. I know. <laughs> uh, so our final author we have with us today is um, Jaddy. So Jaddy, tell us a bit about what you're working on, what you've got coming up, the quarantine, the things you think we should be reading. So I'm El Jaji Lamplighter, and my latest book out came out in March, and as I explained earlier to these ladies that I don't have a copy yet, I haven't seen it yet, but someone else got it and said it looked okay. Um, but it is part of a series called the uh, uh, Books of Unexpected Enlightenment, which have been described as uh, Supernatural, the TV show, show meets Narnia at Hogwarts, which I think is a great explanation because it's, the setting is like Harry Potter, but the story isn't really like Harry Potter. So it's like at Hogwarts, but it's not Harry Potter per se. But it, it follows a, a British girl who's going to school at a, an American magic school in the Hudson, middle of the Hudson. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So book five came out uh, in March. And I'm also the editor for uh, a series of anthologies called Fantastic Schools. Uh, Chris Nuttall and I, he's, a, he's a, talking about reading. One of the series I'm reading is he has two series about magic schools. One of them is called uh, School in Magic and the other is called The Zero Enigma. And he and I collaborated to get a bunch of authors who write magic school stories together. And uh, I was, I've been in a lot of anthologies. Usually they sell like I get $5 royalties, you know, at the end of two years. This book is outselling mine. I've been really impressed. So I recommend the Magic School Volume 1, Magic School Volume 2, I think is even is even better. will be out in a, in a month or two. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun. I had my son publishing that one so because he, he needs money for college. So he was really proud that his book is doing better. <laughs> but my book is also doing pretty well. So I was really happy about that. But uh, so it's a really fun thing to be doing, both the editing, and, you know, and writing. And I'm writing book six now, so that's what I'm doing writing wise. And I also teach writing, which I've also been doing. I have a series of uh, videos about writing that will be coming out within a couple months. Uh, but as far as reading, it's funny, you know, I was going to start with something else, but I'm also reading a Sherlock Holmes book. I just started. I'm only a few pages in, but so far it's really good. It's called Murder in the Vatican. And it is by uh, Anne-Marie Lewis. And it's based on a line from some Sherlock Holmes book where it says that like he was asked by the Pope to investigate a case. And then so she wrote the case. So I can't tell you much about it except that the, the language and the mood in the first few pages is spot on for Sherlock Holmes. And I, yes. I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, I think I will mention, because no one else has, I read Peace Talks by uh, Jim Butcher, which I had I've waited for for years, literally. I think the last one came out in like 2013. I met, so many years ago I was at a convention and I had a friend who was writing a story about a magical detective. And there sitting in the convention was this young man no one had ever heard of, writing, selling three or four books about a magical detective. And I went up and mentioned this and I bought a book for my friend and had him sign it. And then Harry Dresden took off and Jim Butcher became huge. And last year at Dragon Con, I met him again. And I told him the story. <laughs> He'd been inspired by his work and he was really nice about it. But I love the series. I do must say that Peace Talks is really part one of two. 
And I'm really happy that part two Battleground comes out at the end of September because it would be a long wait. He doesn't normally write two parters, you know, but yeah. Uh, so I won't say too much about it, except I really enjoyed it. And I think it will probably be even more enjoyable when we see the end of it. <laughs> One reason apparently it took so long to come out is he was writing it and his editor said to him, you can't publish that, it's too long. So he had to kind of retool it and divide it into two. But it's a series I, I really love. I, I kind of just enjoyed it a bit until about the third or fourth book. And since then, it's been my favorite thing that com coming out, you know, that that's current. Uh, so... 50 books wow you know I thought I'd done really well when during quarantine I read 15 books in the same series this to me was huge I don't get to read very much I'm a homeschool mom and a writer so reading is like you know very precious and but I have a, a friend named John Molner who has been my like uh, indie guru I should say I have books with the wonderful small press word fire and I have books with uh, an indie uh, small publisher of my own called uh, Wisecraft, which is kind of under the umbrella of Silver Empire, which is kind of a growing concern as a publisher. Um, but he's been my leader in how to do this for many years because he took off in the early days of being indie and does really well. But I'd never read anything that he'd written. And I sat down because his latest ad for his latest book sounded good. And the book is called Cloak Games Thief Trap, I think. And I read all 15 of them. <laughs> and it's just, it's just, you know, it's like popcorn fun, you know? I'm not going to tell you they're serious, but they were enjoyable. The setup is there's this girl whose brother has an illness that only extreme special magic can fix. So he's going to die if she doesn't do what the evil mage who's, who's taken over her life tells her to do. So he trains her from the age of five to be a super thief to steal things for him. And she has to do it or her brother dies. And then it's so it's full of explosions and adventure and it's a little bit like a urban fantasy, but it's set 300 years in the future in a world that's kind of like ours because they haven't, the elves haven't let the technology change after they conquered America. And it's just fun, you know? I mean, it's, I'm not gonna say it's not, it has, it has a few flaws, but I really enjoyed reading it. It was just fun to kick back. Um, so that was, you know, I recommend his stuff, at least if, you, if you're looking for something that's fun, quick, you know, you get a story, you get the characters are, are likable and you move forward with it. The other book I want to mention, just super quick, because I don't think I should spend much time on it, is I, the best thing I've read in years was a book called House by the River by Anthony Reagan. And it's, I discovered it because he's one of my writing students. And I felt, I mean, usually the writing students, they give things and I help them along, but they're not particularly entertaining. You know, they're working and they, they get better as they go along. Some of them have gone on to write really great things. But I just thought these bits were so magical. The kind of book I fell in love with when I was a kid, where the magic doesn't quite reveal itself. So it's all from the point of view of a young man who lives in this house in Ontario, and its house is four stories inside, but only three stories outside. And it goes on from there. It's on. A, it's called the house on the by the river because there was a flood and all the lesser houses were washed away. But this big stone house is still there, and the magic stays like that. It has a wonderful magical house and strange things that happen. And I, I just hope that it gets published and you guys get to read it too. Nice. That is great. Tamsin, why don't you talk a bit about um, what you've got coming out? I know you've published a couple of things. You've got a couple of things on the way. So yeah, give us a taste of what's coming. Uh, so um, during some of the other Dragon Cons, I have spoken about the fact that I, the reason I, I now live in New Mexico is because I was living in New York and I wrote a short story about Billy the Kid. And I went out to New Mexico to do research and fell in love with it moved here <laughs> and I work for a hospital here full-time and um and so uh, the book was a short story and I kept working and it came out in May <laughs> so um the curse of Billy the Kid is the first book of three uh it was originally going to be two but false death wanted three and I said yeah sure I can write another one <laughs> so um so the second book uh, is called the um, it's called the Torment of Richard Brewer, and it it'll be out. We're recording this, and it'll be out actually tomorrow. So by the time you guys watch this, 
Uh, the Torment of Richard Pearl will be out. It was scheduled to come out for Dragon Con, of course. And, um, and then the third book uh, that will come out hopefully in early 2021 that I'm just finishing that will cap off the first trio is called The Murder of Cricket Kugler. Um, all of the books are based on history of the Lincoln County War and the murder of a young waitress in Las Cruces in 1949. Uh, Las Cruces, um, Cricket Kugler was a, her real name's Ovida. Uh, they called her Cricket and she was a very sassy waitress. She was 18. And, um, and, she, and she was killed and it, it rocked New Mexico. It was the first big, and it was never solved. And so, um, and there's a lot of similarities of what was going on in Las Cruces in 1949 as what was going on in Lincoln, New Mexico in 1878. Um, you had the Santa Fe ring, you had a lot of corruption in politics. I know that's so surprising. <laughs> um, and um, they have, um, the, the sheriff is dirty. They're all you're making money off of in, in 1949, it's, it's the gambling and it's the, it's believe it or not, it's the Chicago mafia. Um, so, uh, there is, um, there's a lot of research that went into this. Um, I have more books than I care to even, they're, they're above, they take up a whole line of this. Um, and so those are what came out. This just, we were doing this rapid release, so we were excited and then everything came to a halt. I know, right? Um, but to, uh, to answer the rest of the question, um, so quarantine read, other thing I've been doing is I'm starting to research the next section. So as you all know, Billy the Kid died, in, supposedly died in my books, uh, in, 18, uh, in 1881. And he, in my series, he's not dead. Shocking. Um, it's fantasy. So, um, so, right? Uh, so anyways, so if you think about the 1800s, uh, he ends up going to London. He's on his way, he's in London in the early 1800s and 1880s, basically. Late 1880s, London. Anyone? Anyone? Mm -hmm. got a clue? Hold wait, on. Wait, wait, we've got, we've got Sherlock going again. Jack, <laughs> Jack the Ripper. Yeah, Jack the Ripper. So, um, so I've got a ton of these books on Jack the River, but not just that. So because I want to do a trio, um, we're talking, and this could take me a while to research and do, but my quarantine reads that I have a stack of here, um, this is an amazing book, if anyone knows what this is. H.H. Yes. Um, H. Holmes. Uh, there's actually, if you have the History Channel, there is a show on there right now you can watch called American Ripper. And it's about H.H. H. Holmes's, I think, uh, great-great-grandson trying to prove that they think that H.H. H. Holmes could have been the Ripper. On top of that, there is a, there's this. So the name of this series, he was the first serial killer, and, and it was here in the United States in 1885 in Texas. And he was called the Servant Girl Annihilator. So, um, uh, <laughs> And so, and they also think that it's possible that was Ripper. He went to London. He ended up in Chicago. And wow. so, and so, that's the reason I've been also listening to Rob over again, J.D. Rob, is because these books will be a continuation of, of Billy the Kid stuff, but it's also going to be dealing with uh, the hunt for the serial killer in the next section of books that I plan to write for this. So um, I've been spending a lot of time uh, going to bed at night and reading, re <laughs> reading, reading very creepy things. Um, my mother's concerned. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's fine. Um, but I really have fallen in love with writing fantasy and wrapping it around history. Um, I've kept everything in the Curse of Billy the Kid series as real as possible with with everything I've learned from historians and read um, the only there's only a couple things I changed and that would be three people that normally die in history they don't die because that's part of my fantasy other than that I have found a way to take and keep the real history and wrap fantasy around it support it so if you are someone who loves 
that kind of stuff. Um, I, it's a really fun adventure. Um, I'm super excited for book two to come out this next week. In the, and I already have some people who have ordered it. They're like, they are that excited for it. Um, so uh, that is, that has been my year. It's uh, me trying to finish this book. It's really hard because I'm working from home. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's what I'm spending my quarantine time on. I'm finishing book three. Um, and I am reading about Jack the Ripper, which sounds, for some people would think that's crazy, but I, I'm just strange. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. I, the, I commend you for <clears throat> reading any type of serial killer right before bed, because that just... It's the only time I have. And, <laughs> yeah. It's the only time I have. I mean, I won't lie. I mean, the reason I've gotten through all the J.D. Robb books, which by the way, I looked up, she's writing these, she's been writing these books for 25 years. Book 62 of them is coming out this year. And I'm on book 56 mm -hmm. because I find time listening to books for me um, is nice and relaxing it because I spend the day looking at numbers and staring at computers uh, for the emergency department. Uh, for the hospital here. And so I can close my eyes and listen to a book. So that's why I've gone through that many books. Versus, I don't think I would have done that many if I was reading Liz. Don't feel bad. <laughs> you had but, any of that relaxing with murder? Like you had relaxing with murder. That, that can be the title. You can put that under my name, Tamsin Silver. Relaxing with murder. Check her out at tamsinsilver.com. <laughs> Brilliant. You oh should keep searching a plug all panel. <laughs> Jean Marie, what have you got? Uh, I know you have quite a few things that have been published recently. You want to talk about them? Plug yourself? Okay, well, there's, uh, this year has been a bit odd, but, you know, 2018 yeah. and 2019, I was all over the map with everything from military strategy, no lie. Uh, the only person in the book who was writing about the human component of the military, it's like, it's all weapons? No, sorry, not. Uh, in something called Strategy Strikes Back, um, story in Asimov's, uh, another sci-fi story, and uh, a um, I too love secret history, Tamsin. Uh, I had a story published uh, 2018, late 2018, in Joshua Paul Mateer's um, second round, more stories from the Urbar, which is set in 1421 Ming China. And like you, I, there's something about history that, you know, there are things you can do with history that when you have to invent your entire world, you just don't get the kind of depth you get when you're doing historical fantasy. And, uh, you know, it, it's a pain in the butt to research. But that said, my next uh, things are going to probably be urban fantasy and a um, weird Wild West. I have no idea when I, too, am a Falstaff book author. I have no idea when John is going to publish it. Uh, the, uh, the, the urban fantasy is something called Capital Magic. One book is already in the can. Uh, the second book I'm working on, and basically it has me reading things like, because uh, it's all set in D.C., nice. and yeah, like you, it's like, I got to get this right. The one I'm working on now takes place entirely in the Library of Congress, which for those of you who are not local to the Washington, D.C. area, is literally the most beautiful building in the world. And uh, that's saying a lot when I spent three years uh, being dragged around mu to museums and churches in Europe. Yeah, they, ain't, they don't got nothing compared to the Library of Congress. And it's closed right now. So, of course, I'm trying to write in it. But of course. The, yeah, <laughs> it just makes perfect sense. But the other thing that John Hartness has in mind, something called Siren Bridge that some folks have actually heard me read from because it's been working for years and it's kind of maverick with magic in skirts. Sweet. So that's John. what I'm up to. And then of course, Joshua has another uh, Kickstarter running uh, that will be done by the time this airs called um, Deities uh, 
derelicts and colliding uh, cultures, three anthologies. I'm in a modern guides, uh, a modern deities guide to surviving humanity. And well, Bacchus has got some problems. You know, we've just had the fire in uh, Napa Valley and uh, the, a lot of alcohol production has been turned into hand sanitizer and Mammon wants to um, foreclose on the vineyards. I'm going to have to tie that up in 7,500 words. God help me. Oh, man, that's hard. I have a hard time doing shorts. I, I've literally stopped because I get bad reviews. They're like, oh, this feels like it should be a book. I'm like, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> but John's not a them. bad review. It's not a bad review when they want more. I guess. John's got an urban fantasy of mine I totally forgot about. Moon over Manhattan, that'll probably come out in 2021. Cool. It's a female werewolf alpha in Manhattan saving the city. You know, as you do. As one does, yeah. Yeah, she's real kick-ass. I like Denica a lot. It's how I met my best friend. She modeled for it when I did photos of it when I wrote it in 20. I wrote it in 2010. Wow. And then it just, it sat. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Mm -hmm. So finally, I was talking to Jay Ricard. And he's like, you should pitch that to John. I'm like, you sure? He's like, yeah. So they, uh, yeah, they ended up taking it. So that'll come out in 2021. First book of it'll come out. There's three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Question for you, ladies. What are some of your favorite books or shows to escape to? Mm -hmm. Downtime. You just need, you know, two hours to shut your brain off. One Piece. My husband and I are on our re-watching One Piece. There's currently about 950 episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of what? 950 on our second time through. Now, they're only about 20, 25 minutes each. So you're really talking about three to an hour. But oh my gosh, this show is so good. It's like the best show of any show anywhere. I what missed is the this title. Show? One, Piece? One Piece? One Piece. It's an anime. It's an anime. Oh, that's why I don't recommend it. Even that's among the anime notice. fans, it's not that well known. But when I went to China in 2012, you could buy One Piece stuff as easily as you could buy Disney stuff, which was just as popular there as here. And it's been number one running in the East um, in polls for years. It's been going 20 years now. And it's a pirate story about a young boy who wants to be king of the pirates. But the author just as he went along, he just got better and better and better. So it starts out okay, you know, and then if you get about 250 episodes in, it's really good. <laughs> we 250 make sure you stick with them for a while. It's just terrific. And from there, it's just wonderful. So it is, it is by far my favorite thing. And we just, my husband and I, who are both writers, will sit there going, there's not that much. We sit and we go, there's, this guy's just better than us. We have to up our game. You know? <laughs> But we do that and we take notes. We're like, okay, how can we learn from this and, and do this better? Because he's really good at a bunch of stuff. Like he's really good at maintaining his characters over this long time so they don't lose the characters. A lot of long-term shows, the characters kind of fall off, particularly anime. He's really good at upping the stakes so that, you know, when you he you fight something terrible and he really gives you an impression, the next thing is even bigger. And he does it really cleverly. Uh, and the emotional side of it is just wonderful. So... The number one show for me is One Piece. I, I strongly recommend it. It looks unbelievably weird. The first time, for like the first half of the first time through, I would just sit there going, this is so freaky. And I get used to the thing, you know, like a, a guy with a beard in a, in a ballerina outfit or whatever it was, who can change shape by slapping his face. And then the next thing comes on, I'm like, this is so freaky. But now I've kind of gotten used to it, and that only happens once in a while. But it's just the characters are really likable and really three-dimensional. And I hope at some point when I'm done with the current writing class to write a series of articles called All My Writing. The very beginning of the show had this thing where it used to say the King of the Pirates, when he was executed, said, I left all my treasure in one piece, which is what set off the great pirate age that the main character is involved in. So I'm going to write all my writing advice in one piece and, and just go through all the different writing things and how well he do it in the show. I, I just love the show. <laughs> that's my go to. Nice. Wow. Oh, that's wonderful. Tamsin, Jean Marie. Um, Tamsin, do you want to start or do you want me to? I can go. 
Um, so we're going to see a theme here. Oh, warning. Um, Rizzoli and Isles. <laughs> Uh, when I, my mother just moved to Arizona from Texas, because obviously she wanted hotter um, <clears throat> truth dryer, um, but uh, I was giving her access to my account on, um, I think it's what, Hulu? And it says, you know, what things do you like? And I was like looking through, I'm like, okay, what do you like to watch? And we came, I went, and I stood up off her couch and went, oh my God, Rizzoli and Isles is on here. And she's, I'm like, you're going to like that show. I've made decisions. <laughs> um, and uh, so I got back and I went into Hulu immediately and so whenever I just want to like sit back and enjoy and relax I watch Murder Cops <laughs> I'm a problem um, so I watch uh, I watch Rizzoli and Isles um, I also really uh, I'm going back and I'm watching um, season one of Umbrella Academy because I'm, uh, season two is so great and I was on the panel for it and I was like, you know what, let's go back and watch it. But I'm limiting myself. I watch two episodes at a time so I don't just binge the whole thing. So I'm going back and watching and I'm really enjoying seeing how their characters really are, have grown in season two, since I've seen two and going back. So I'm the theater person in me and the director in me is enjoying watching it from that perspective. So those, are the, those right now are my two, that and I was watching one other one. Oh, I don't even know the name of it. Zach Efron, and he's going around the world. Does anyone yes. know what that's called? Life, life something? Yeah. So I watched a couple episodes for the first time last night, and I was like, I'm really sad. There's only one season. I may watch these through and then just start over and watch it because it's really awesome. That's cool. <laughs> and I'd had a hard day yesterday, and it was exactly what I needed. So highly recommend that as well. I, I I just got Netflix, so you know I don't know all of the wonderful stories. But uh, before I got Netflix, I got Netflix lar largely for Carol Malcolm, who said Lucifer, and I said yes. Oh, I need to get to up on two seasons, don't I? Uh, but um, uh -huh. and yes, I am doing that because Tom Ellis and whoever is playing him in a deal are so fine. They are oh just God. so fine. And, um, but yes, we won't, I won't start perving out on that, but yeah, just Lucifer, go do it. And um, the, uh, though I will confess, my girl crush is the, the woman who plays Dr. Linda Martin because she's the only sane person in the entire series. And I just <laughs> love her to death. But um, anyway, no, what I was doing though before I got Netflix was I was binging on mysteries because comfort. And, um, you know, the uh, things like Lewis and uh, Inspector, uh, Inspector Morose, uh, yes. as we, we call him in this house, uh, but Inspector Morse actually, because talk about travel porn, all of the beautiful views of Oxford, uh, that show has them, and so does Lewis. And then of course, Endeavor, which is Morse as a young man, uh, but um, the other, Guilty Pleasure, again, Mysteries. But this one, you have to go on to um, MHZ, which is a streaming service. It does foreign mysteries. And my family, my mother's people were from South Italy. Not Sicilian, you understand. The Sicilians, they're no good. <laughs> but we're from Basel de Cot. Well, let me tell you, the people in Sicily think, you know, they say in Sicily, they fell out of the trees and somebody put shoes on them. Well, in Basel Agat, they couldn't fit the shoes over the, the um, opposable toe. And that's my people. But anyway, there is a series based on the books of Andrea Camilleri, which is a very beloved series, about a Sicilian detective named uh, Inspector Montalbano. Now, Salvatore, uh, Salvo Montalbano. And I swear, watching that show is like hearing my family at the top of their lungs, you know, talking about food, <laughs> talking about the machina, talking about what to eat, uh, what you do, you know, and uh, the Montalbano, it, it, it's like, it's like listening to people who have been dead for 30 years, just listening to that show, and I, I adore it. 
But uh, in terms of new stuff this year, The Alienist, I mean, talk about incredible oh. sets, incredible um, costumes, incredible Dakota Fanning. And um, damn, the guy hasn't writ written book three yet. This is How is wrong. season two? Is season two really good? It's on my list. Season two is really good, yes. And the other thing, uh, and I read this one before I started watching it, is um, Lovecraft Country, which just started. And it is just as excellent as the book. It really is. Really? We've got, oh, yeah. On the list. Yeah. However, be forewarned, it is very difficult watching on a number of levels because they do not shy away from the racism that uh, basically required the existence of the Green Book or the racism even in places that you do not think of. You know, we, we tend to in America think that the problems only exist in the South. No, they don't. And they never did. And this explores all the aspects of that in the middle of these incredible reimaginings and reclaiming of somebody who himself was a ghastly misogynistic racist, H.P. Lovecraft. And um, it's a really, really gripping show, but it, it is sometimes hard to watch. And in fact, my husband was saying he, it was too uncomfortable. Oh, wow. So. Well, let me mention really quickly three other things that we've watched recently that I think are worth mentioning. So I was in the laundromat. I remember why I was in a public laundromat a couple of months ago, and I saw the show. I'm like, that looks really good. So I looked it up because it was in Spanish. I couldn't understand it. Turned out it's called The Chosen. It's a crowdfunded story of Jesus and the early in the, the Gospels. So I was like, okay, that doesn't sound so great. But a friend of mine who's science fiction was in charge of science fiction in the Library of Congress for many years said she loved it. So we tried it, and oh my gosh, it was good because it wasn't anything like what one would expect. Like it starts out with Peter in a fist fight. <laughs> He's gambling to try to get the tax money that he needs to pay to Matthew, the tax collector, Otherwise, he's going to like lose his house and his wife and everything. So he's sneaking out on the Sabbath to fish because the Romans don't come to tax on the Sabbath because Jews don't work on the Sabbath. <laughs> so they get to the point, you know, and, and the whole thing is just really crisp storytelling, really dramatic characters. And, you know, we'd sit there going, I just wouldn't have made that call, you know, because every other Bible thing I've ever seen has been a little boring. But this isn't, it, it's just good. It's really enjoyable. Uh, another one show that I saw that I utterly loved was on Netflix, I believe. It's called uh, Hanson Siblings. And it's like remake 10 of a big Chinese uh, classic. And the, the setup is there's this martial artist and he, he has twins and he and his wife get killed. And one of the twins is taken away by the martial arts queens of the beautiful white palace. And the other twin ends up in Wicked Canyon with the five of the 10 greatest villains of the world. <laughs> so one of them is raised, and they don't know each other are brothers, you, you know? One of them is raised to be this perfect gentleman, and the guy plays it so well, so calm and noble, and he just carries it the whole time. And at first, everything he does just goes wrong. Like he's trying so hard, but he's too naive. The other guy is raised to be able to do all the tricks of all the, the villains so he can change his appearance, he can do martial arts, he can trick people into thinking there's demons. And he is the most cheerful and good-natured guy who doesn't really want to be a villain. <laughs> and they send him out in the world and everything he does goes right. Like, you see, like he gets tricked, but then he'll trick people back. And, and it's just, the martial arts is amazing. The look is amazing. The costumes are amazing. And it's just a dull, like every moment you're, you're like, oh my gosh, that was totally not what I thought was going to happen, you know, because everything reverses over and over again. But the whole thing is extremely charming. I really recommend it. This version of it is called Handsome Siblings and was done like in 2019 or 2020. There are apparently lots of other versions, but the acting was particularly charming in this version. Yes. Um, oh, that's great. One other thing that I was going to mention. Oh, the other thing is it's been out there a while, but we've been watching Star Trek Continues, which is like Star Trek done by fans. Yeah. And so far, it's been surprisingly enjoyable. My husband had just watched the old Star original Star Trek with my sons, and he's like, they got that spot on. Or, I, you know, like everything follows directly. 
which is enjoyable. So, so far, at least about halfway through it, I think we're trying not to binge too fast. You know? Didn't they? Didn't they win a fan Hugo? I, think so. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. It's a superb job, and a few of the characters at first, I was like, I'm not buying them as so and so, but now I am. You know, like they were doing a good job with the acting, and so you know, if you like Star Trek, I, I recommend that. That is great. All right, we don't have too much time left. Um, I think for our final question to the panelists, um, if you could take over a series, what book series would you like to take over and just run with? Whether it's rewrite or continue on or just do some edits to your own liking. Not so much take over a series, as continue it. Um, mm -hmm. There was a wonderful mainstream writer of the 1990s called Judith Merkel Riley. And she was writing uh, historical fiction with intense magic. Her first two were, um, uh, oh God, I forget the titles I'm going to be um, blanking out on, but they were uh, about the green dragon, alchemy. And uh, incredible, Incredible characters, especially women. And uh, the next book was um, a couple other books, but the one that really socked me in the jaw was something called The Oracle Glass, which is set around the uh, affair of the poisoners in the court of Louis XIV. She's also written about Nostradamus in uh, The Master of All Desires. And uh, there, I have read five of her books and I've been holding on to the six because she died after the six because mm -hmm. I can't bear not to have another one of her books in my future. And I may break down here in 2020, but if I could do one thing, I would have given her time to write more books because they are absolutely fantastic and every level fantasy, history, uh, plot and characterization and romance because I mean, they're just wonderful at every level. And, uh, you know, the, the book I wish I could have written was The Oracle Glass. So just a plug for that. Not so much continuing because, you know, we're fixing because if I like a series, I don't want to fix it. I want it all of its charm and perfection, perfect imperfection. Yeah. So. Hmm. Samson, Jaggy. I was just saying, if we can go the other direction, I really wish when they pick somebody to do the prequels for the Nine Princes of Amber that I could have done that because I actually wrote wow. the guy they picked this long letter about how you should write that the Amber book because I had run millions of Amber role playing games and had played in millions of Amber games. And the guy wrote back to me and said, I really wish you'd been my editor because it's really good ideas, but it's too late now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, mean, I was able to give a few ideas, but not, you know, he couldn't really start over from the analysis. Yeah, yeah. I so I would have loved to do those. I love those books. Every, they, they inform everything I do. And uh, I guess if I had picked another series, I loved... Uh, Alan Gardner's Weird Son of Brzingerman and Moon of Gomrath. And I just wish there was more of that. You know, I guess if I was going to write a kid's book. I wish I could write another one with that background and characters. Um, let's see. I wouldn't want to rewrite it. So um, one of my favorite authors is Faith Hunter. And um, I got lucky enough to be asked to write a short story in her Rogue Mage anthology that she did. Um, and um, if I could do anything, I'd like to continue that into uh, novellas or a book. I'd like to take that character that I did and I'd like to write in her world and get that opportunity if I had a, if I ever had a chance. Um, they, it was such a, it was such a fantastic experience uh, some of my favorite fight scenes I've ever written are in that story. Um, but how can you turn down, like, I got to work with Faith Hunter writing fight, like, of course they're great. Faith Hunter helped me, worked with me on it. Um, but um, it was a character I really loved. Um, and the short story is called Metal Wind. Um, and it's a pirate story. 
a bisexual woman um, from India. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, and it's in the future. It's really fantastic story. I love her world that she created. And so if I, if I could write something, I'd like the chance to continue that. Um, that that's something that I would really like to do. Well, you guys, thank you all so much for joining us. This has been a ton of great information. So there is a bunch of things out there to go check out, like brand new stuff, old things that you may not have known about, some classics that have been rediscovered. So thank you all. Um, Audience, if you guys have a second, hop online and head over to your favorite digital bookstore and pick up some of these great books or queue up some of these great shows to watch because there is no reason to be bored in 2021 we have that solved for y'all. And again, thank you guys. And if you are looking for more panels from us, you can join us at alternatehistory.dragoncon.org and see our entire schedule or follow us on any of our social media channels where we are making the extra effort to post everything we can. And again, bye and we'll see y'all in 2021. So please stay safe. Bye. Bye Bye, everyone. Bye. Here.